Today with Amazon Business, Shannon Stuckey of Walburn Woodworking helped her team buy 63 circular saws. Okay, Andy, take it easy. Now she uses her time to focus on growing something big. Buy smarter, dream bigger. Visit Amazon Business, your partner for smart business buying. Hello and a warm welcome to the Mission Shunya podcast. Excuse me, please hold on. We have a theme music to start with. Hello and a warm welcome to yet another episode on the Mission Shunya podcast. Wherever you are, I hope you are doing well. The podcast always has been about one key takeaway in enabling you to be a part of the global net zero transition. Hopefully, over the last few years, you found some insights about the technology that you use, got to understand something that is new in the technology space. or maybe found something that influenced your choice and decision making i really hope that is the case that you are tuning into the show every other week it is in that interest i wanted to bring to you this story a personal one on how i decided to buy an electric vehicle and what are the points i personally went through in making my decision i hope this is of interest to you but yes it is a little subjective but nevertheless these pointers can help you in making better decisions and hopefully i debunk some of your myths in the process again this is general so wherever you are in the world i will cover some important points that you can look into while deciding to buy an electric vehicle so let's get to my story first if by going through all the conversations that i have on this episode if you believed that i am living the most sustainable lifestyle checking all the boxes sorry to disappoint you i am a work in progress on that front My fundamental principle is to do everything minimal and buy your own assets only if you need them. So that has been the case even in the mobility part too. For a long time I used to depend on my bicycle and the public transport systems to get around places. I personally didn't own any gasoline vehicle but some things have to change and maybe they change for good. So what changed in my life that altered my lifestyle and choices? So, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Premashri, officially your better half. So, yes, marriage got me to make that investment that allowed two of us to be more flexible and mobile rather than me hop on bicycle and go around. Also, the pandemic over the last couple of years did have an impact on having a personal mobility option rather than completely depending on the public transit. So we decided to get a two wheeler that is quite optimum for two people traveling in city and we began the pursuit of finding and buying one and since i work in the electric mobility space and i'm passionate about sustainable transport options the only thing that i was very sure about was buying an electric vehicle was it a big of concern for you when i said we just go and buy electric vehicle yes obviously it was a very big concern well The concern was justified because there were a lot of rumors going around electric vehicles and things around that which we will get to it in a later part of the conversation. So, now that we decided on an electric vehicle, we went to the market. Do you remember how many vehicles we tested? That was all the vehicles that were in the market? How was your experience like driving an electric vehicle? Initially, it was scary because the silence in the vehicle plus the instant acceleration was a bit of a different kind of experience but yes slowly i got adjusted to it and after all the test rides we decided to place a bet on an upcoming launch well i'll keep this neutral without naming any brands again to clarify i have done this in the podcast a few times that i don't get paid formally from brands or any names or guest or companies that come on the show it's all neutral and i will keep it that way as long as i can no conflict of interest podcast is my passion weekend project and with no strings attached so back to the booking this brand just like all the new and upcoming electric vehicle brands globally opted for an online process so you do all the payments booking and everything online 
without having any physical showroom visits but you just get to visit a center to test drive the vehicle in all the cities it goes on a tour and that was how it happened for this brand so we did the booking and then we had to wait a long time and interestingly between the time we made the first payment to getting the vehicle it was really long wait personally for me it was very understandable because i know what goes into building the first generation of a electric vehicle the process and the time required to get everything perfectly fine so i was fine with that in the meantime we did have a lot of fire accidents in india particularly for electric two wheeler scooters well i have found this trend actually that when you see a news in recent times you get similar news popping up of the same nature so be it any fire accident or be it any accident in this case it happened to be electric vehicles catching fire so you had a lot of other news coming up saying like electric vehicles were catching fire well ideally it should not be happening but even now i will emphasize that if you take the number of vehicles catching fire as a percentage of the total vehicle population i think evs and the gasoline vehicles are almost on the close trends well having said that there should be no reason why vehicles have to catch fire the quality of the product has to be top notch you don't have to you should not be having even once an incident of that but nevertheless new technologies when they come up they do have some small flaws which unfortunately as a consumer we will have to end up bearing so was this a cause of concern for you it was a very big cause of concern and well even after we got the vehicle there was this notion of fear that she had about overnight charging do you still have that fear yes quite often well charging your vehicle overnight makes it very easy that you come in the night put your vehicle and then charge it overnight so that it it's up and ready when you get up in the morning and go to work but i understand the reasons why electric vehicles catch fire and what happened in the cases in india during that period well there are two reasons basically one is a faulty cell that makes the electric vehicle battery and the other is the battery management systems the battery management system should ideally keep track of every single cell in the system monitor its parameters and then cut off the battery if the parameters of the cell vary unfortunately in most of these cases faulty cells were the culprit well if you think that such kind of incidents happen only because startups build vehicle and startups in india are build vehicles well you are wrong globally even global automakers the big established ones have had to recall vehicles because they found faulty cells in the batch process that they produced in fact even a large brand recalled sold electric cars because they suspected that the faulty cell could be an issue in a vehicles that they shipped and the vehicles were running for a couple of years actually we will in fact discuss ev safety in a later episodes where i will get couple of my good friends in the industry technical experts who will be able to explain this in more detail but as i said again such incidents get amplified thanks to the media coverage now back to our story finally we got the vehicle touchwood we didn't have any major issues that were seen with the earlier versions of the vehicle we had only like a small technical glitch and this again i will have to point out that all electric vehicles are very interconnected electrically connected so it, they're all electrical connections electrical wires going around the vehicle so some connections tend to get faulty and like we had a small loose contact well again small loose contacts can also make the vehicle useless so i'll have to tell you that as well but ours was a very minor one i kind of found out what was the issue and i said like i got it rectified well during that time the vehicle was absolutely fine running but since i found the glitch i kind of got it rectified again this experience is little unique because you don't have electric vehicle service centers in cities where you can just go and get this exchanged you will have to again do the online process of setting up a request raising a request and then just like how the vehicle was delivered to the doorstep you had a technician come and then fix it again unique experience in the modern automobile sales and in the period from the launch to now we also got our vehicles upgraded well or rather had a software update the u- new age of electric vehicles come totally connected to the internet with an electronic sim so we get all the updates software updates 
and when i tell you updates over there updates just like mobile phones well this is the entire software that gets updated so that runs your vehicle and it can be like totally complete right from throttle calibration to speed to other features etc a really cool feature with the modern electric vehicles again this was one of the reasons that we took the bet with this vehicle because i knew once the early glitches were fixed we would get the updates over the air and it could definitely change the entire vehicle directly so that was a big bet that we placed and so far it has been going good 1000 miles plus completed so with the new updates with the cool features coming on the vehicle do you think that we made a good choice placing the bet on this vehicle do you enjoy the new features i do enjoy the cruise control that has come up very recently after the software update and touchwood we don't want any more glitches will we have it well i hope not and even if there are minor corrections that we will probably get a new software update well now before i jump into talking about the other range of incentives and other factors that we considered in buying a vehicle i would like to say a big thanks to our friends at terrageneration.com who are creating the beautiful artworks that you see in the episodes Terra Generation is a content and marketing agency specialized in telling stories of people and organizations working in climate and biodiversity conservation and sustainability. You should definitely check them and they have been good friends who provide good feedback about the show and also help spread the message. And now le- let me answer a few questions that you'll have as a prospective consumer. The big question that everyone has is should I wait for the prices to come down? Well, personally, I think it's always a bad choice. because a case in point is the recent conflict that's happening globally which is causing all the prices to increase globally for all metals and all commodities in general so waiting for price drop is not something worth doing the second point is of course on the battery safety will there be a safer battery coming up again each incident makes batteries more safer even after the recent incidents the government has come up with new regulations new standards that that kind of fortifies the testing protocols and ensures that batteries and battery management systems are well tested so i think there will always be improvements just like in any new technology so again i would say it's a good safe bet to place buying an electric vehicle at this point in time then the other question is around should i trust a first gen vehicle well like what we did most of the vehicles that you will be buying are going to be first gen those are going to be coming up from houses not of traditional oems but startups are going to be building that especially if you talk about two wheelers but of course traditional oems are indeed coming up in a big way setting up big factories to make electric cars and bigger vehicles but there is always going to be the first gen vehicle that is going to be rolling up and like i said like even if there are minor glitches modern vehicles come up with ota capabilities so they will be fixed at any point in time and like in the general case there will always be new technology that is always going to be radically new from time to time so definitely not worth the wait so if you are considering buying a vehicle and if you are inclined to buy an electric vehicle even by the smallest margin i would highly encourage you to make the decision to buy an ev now well the other thing is about use cases always remember to live a sustainable lifestyle buy what you need like in our case the use was just about 100 kilometers on a weekly basis just for normal commute so we just stuck with two wheeler and since both of us will be traveling to work and coming back we looked at a vehicle that could have a bit of space where we could keep some stuff and then go so in this case scooter compared to an electric bike per se was better because there was space that could be used to keep stuff and likewise if globally if you are looking at other vehicles and if your distances are pretty small then you could look at something like an electric bike that comes with pedal assist systems that can kind of help you while pedaling so those are optimum choices and if you are in europe or us there is other thing about quadricycles electric quadricycles that are speed capped that can also be very good choice for you but if you are hitting the road very often then obviously electric cars could be a good choice so definitely based on the use you have a range of electric vehicle options that you can pick on and while you look at that the other thing that you need to look at is about the vehicle level incentives to encourage electric vehicles governments all around the world are providing incentives a range of incentives even like upfront subsidies or tax rebates and so on 
So in our case, when we bought this vehicle, one thing that was very curious about was the battery capacity because bigger batteries give you a better range. And also, incentives in India for electric two-wheelers are such a way that bigger batteries have bigger incentives. So it was a win-win both ways. You get bigger battery, bigger mileage, and also the incentives are a little better. So if you are in, in a region that provides incentives based on battery capacity, well, it's worth placing your bet on a vehicle with a bigger battery. Likewise, if I was buying a car, I would ensure that the interest portion that I would be paying on the loan was available for exemption because that is another incentive that is available in India. I'm sure similar incentives are available globally. Well, there are other non-fiscal incentives that you should also look at. Like for example, there are certain European cities where parking is an issue. If you're living in such a city, electric quadricycles are a good choice. France and a few other countries don't need a license to drive the speed-capped small electric compact cars or the quadricycles. And these vehicles also stand to have a parking space in bike zones or small compact zone in these city centers. On the other hand, e-bikes and e-scooters would be my favorite if I was in Europe or in the US. Especially in e-bikes, a lot of brands are providing subscription service so that you no need to worry about the breakdowns, the technical glitches that would come with a new electric vehicle. And there are better services like you can probably pay over a period and also own the vehicle. So all those kind of new financial packages or new packages from brands are a good thing that you should opt for. Well, there are incentives, fiscal incentives, even for pedal assist electric bikes in few countries like in India, certain state governments are offering that. And even in US, there is a huge financial package set aside for incentives for electrical bicycles. So do check that as well. And not only vehicles, some countries even offer incentives on electric vehicle chargers that you can set it up in your home. Some countries in Europe especially have grants or subsidies up to like 75% of the charger cost. So even if you plan to buy an EV in the near future, installing a charger will be a necessity. So maybe a typical small slow one going up to 7 kilowatt might not be a bad choice so that if you, there is an incentive available now, you can as well buy that and install it in your home. So summing it up, make hay while the sun shines. When in this case, while you're buying an electric vehicle, there are a host of incentives available throughout the world wherever you are. Please do take time to check them and make a decision and I'm sure you'll never regret it. So finally, I get back to the co-influencer and ask, are you happy with the decision that we made after clocking 1000 plus miles on the vehicle? Yes, I'm very happy about it. Although I've not been part of the entire 1000 miles, I'm very happy with the performance of the vehicle. So are you really looking forward to make a decision similarly for an electric four-wheeler in the future? Maybe. For now, yes. So well, that was a personal story from our end for this episode. Well, if you do have similar stories, personal stories, do share them. Missionchunya at gmail.com is the ID. Or you can also share a story on social media and tag Missionchunya. The handle is at Missionchunya across Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. I would like to hear more from you. Well, talking of social media, I would also have to acknowledge the contribution of Prema in the process. She has been very supportive in kind of making some artworks, putting it on social media and also doing the social media part of it. We will be back in two weeks' time with a regular conversation. Until then, this is Girish Shivakumar and Prema signing off. And as always, thank you for listening. Horizon Block Party is on. It's a free front row ticket to amazing VR experiences all summer long. Only in Horizon Worlds on MetaQuest 2. Post Malone kicks things off with a special VR performance of 12 Karat Toothache, followed by more of your favorite music, comedy, and sports. Strap on your MetaQuest 2. Download the free Horizon Worlds app and join the party. Follow us on Instagram at Horizon Worlds to learn more.